All right, here's part two of the 7.5 worksheet, the review items. We did one, two, three, four, and then the second number three, which we're going to call number five. All right, so number one gives you an angle, 60 degrees, and then the side across from it, and then a second side, which they've called C. So what we don't have is anything about B, angle or side, and we don't have angle C. So as long as you have a pair, an A and an A, or a B and a B, or a C and a C, I would go for the law of sines, right? It's going to work great. So you're going to say 9 over the sine of 60 degrees equals 10 over the sine of angle C. And you're going to cross multiply, and you're going to unsign it, inverse sine, and you're going to find out that C is 74.2 degrees. Once you know that C is 74.2 degrees, it's just a matter of subtracting to get angle B, so that's 45.8. And then, can't use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for B, you're gonna have to use the law of sines again. This time, still using the nine and the 60, but solving for side B, knowing that angle B is 45.8 degrees. That's easier because you don't even have to use the inverse sign, you just cross multiply and divide. And for that one, you end up with B equaling 70, whoops, not 70, 7.45. Now, at that point, if you're done, you're done. If you realize that this is one of those ambiguous cases, which it is because we have um, side, side, angle. So that's one of those situations where you can have an ambiguous case. And if you look at it, if you lay it out with A, the given angle here, 9 over here, because it's longer than the other given side, we called it B in our notes, but it can be C as well, it's longer than the other, or sorry, it's shorter than the other given side, but not shorter than the height, we have the possibility of this second triangle. So let me show you, the first triangle that we just solved for sits like this. Great, you got that one, you're in business, but there's also the possibility of the one that I've just drawn in green here. And the way to tell that it's the ambiguous case is to solve for the height. If the side across from the angle that you've been given is shorter than the second side given, but longer than the height, it will fit in two different ways. And that gives us that ambiguous case. So how do we solve for the height? Well, the height is always the second given side times the sine of the angle. So the height, is going to be 10 times the sine of 60 degrees. And that turns out to be 8.66. So our side nine does qualify for a second triangle. So remember on the test, if you recognize that there's a second triangle, you can get two more points to get a perfect score on the test. So you're still gonna have A equaling 60 and A equaling nine. And you're still gonna have side C equaling 10. That doesn't change. But what happens is you're going to have a different side um, C, the side, the first one that you solve for, the first angle that you solve for. I said side, but I meant angle. And all you have to do to find this second C is to subtract from 180. So 180 minus, I'm looking at my picture here. I want to see how I have it set up. I did 180 minus B. But I feel like in this case it should be minus C. I'm looking at how I did it in my answer key. For my second triangle, if I subtract the 45.8, that's where I'm giving myself the 134.2. But I think it should have been minus 74.2. All right, I'm going to correct myself on this one. I don't think I did it right on the answer key. Looking at it now... The formula sheet that we have says to use B, 
But because the given side was C, not B, we need to use angle C. So we're going to go for this one right here. Let's see if I set this up right. Let me look at the triangle. Yeah, the problem on my answer key I can see now is I called this in my mind A, but I put B over here in my mind, and this is actually C, and this one is B. Because side 10 is across from angle C, not angle B. So I'm going to correct myself, and I'm going to say that angle C2 is going to be 180 minus... Let's see if I did it right. Let me think about this. Angle C is going to be 74.2. There we go. Which means this is going to be 74.2. Which means that the new angle C is going to be 180 minus 74.2. So that's going to give me 105.8. I like that better, 105.8, okay? So if this comes up in class, if anybody asks, if you've watched the video, you can tell them. I think this makes more sense. So we're gonna go 105.8. We're gonna use that as angle C, which means subtracting from 180 to get B, so 180 minus A, which is 60 degrees, minus 105.8, is going to make B a very small angle, which makes sense if you look at my picture of the green triangle there. So that's going to be 120. So we have 120 minus 105.8. I should have done that in my head. So I get 14.2. So I have 14.2 here. wonder why I have one of the angles wrong and the other one right. Always got to check your own work. Minus, four, minus, I'm checking it one more time. Minus 60, minus 105.8. Yeah, I get 14.2. So, maybe I just wrote down the wrong thing. It doesn't look like it. It looks like I used the wrong side. All right, so last but not least, we've got to solve for side B. So side B is going to be using the law of sines. So I'm going to say, this is the only additional calculation you have to do using the law of sines or cosines. So I'm going to say 10 over, eh, no, let's use 9 and the sine of 60. Those were the given pieces of information. Equals side B over the sine of 14.2 degrees. All right, I've got that set up right on my answer key, it looks like, and so I get that side B equals 2.54. I've labeled it side C in my answer key, so somewhere along there I went wrong, but I must have corrected it at least partially, at least on the version that I have of the answer key. So there you go, 2.54 is that third and final side. It's this little side right here, because now we've swung side A inside the triangle, so we have something shorter. Okay, number two. Number two is a law of um, signs, again, because we have a pair. We have A and A. And so when you set this one up, even if you don't draw the picture, some of you are saying you don't like to, and some of you have started setting it up this way when you're solving for the angle, which I get that. When you cross multiply for this one and you try to inverse sign it, you're going to get an error for angle B. And so this is one of those that has no triangle possible. So you can just answer no solution, no triangle, impossible, anything like that. All right, number three. Number three is a triangle where we have angle side-side or side-side angle, if you want to say it the not bad word way, right? So for this one, we're going to set up the law of signs, and we should check to see if it's an ambiguous case. So let me set it up, and we'll take a look at it. Since the angle given is B, I'm going to put B down here. And I've got side B being 34, which um, leaves the other side. We should put it right here. So it's called side A. So that makes this angle A, and that makes this C. 
So because the side across from the given angle is longer than the other side, we do not have to do two triangles. There's only one, and we're going to say sine of 76 degrees over 34 equals the sine of angle A over 21. I'm going to cross multiply and inverse sine it, and I end up with angle A being 36.8 degrees, which makes finding angle C a piece of cake. I just subtract from 180, and I get 67.2 after I take out the 76 and the 36.8. And then one more law of sines. Again, you can set the law of sines up either way, and it still works. So you can go sine of 76 or over 34 or 34 over the sine of 76, and then you're going to get... Um, side C, which you don't know yet, over the sine of angle C, which you just figured out. Cross multiply there. You don't have to inverse sine it because you're solving for a side and get 32.3. So the three missing parts we found after being given side, side, angle. But the reason it's not the ambiguous case is because the side that we were given across from the angle we were given is longer than the other side. So there's no way it can fit inside and form a second triangle. Okay, number four. An airplane. We used two cities in the distance. I promised you there'd be one like this on the test. So here's the airplane looking down at two cities. We've got the angle of depression to the first city is 50 degrees. That's the bigger angle. The angle of depression to the second, because it's further away, is only 10 degrees. Angle of depression is always from horizontal wherever you are. Okay, and looking down. All right, the plane's altitude is 20,000 feet. So we're going to set up two right triangle trig problems. We're going to solve for the first distance, call that yellow X. And then we're going to solve for the second distance, call that blue X. Okay. And then subtracting them is going to give us the difference or the distance between the two cities. So both of them end up being tangent. You need to know the angle inside the triangle, so take 90 and subtract out the angle of depression. So you can say tangent of 40 degrees equals x over 20,000. And for the second triangle, you can say tangent of, well, if you subtract out 10, that's 80 degrees equals x over 20,000. Solving the first x, you get 16,782. Solving the second x, you're going to get 113,425. What is this in? Feet. Ah, feet. I was going to say, that's a lot of miles. I don't know if that would be possible to see those cities that far away. And then when you subtract the two, you get this distance between them. being, I'm looking, where's my subtraction, 96,643.6. Looks like I added some decimal places of accuracy. I must have done that on my calculator and rounded off these other answers. So that's a lot of feet. If you're wondering about how many miles apart that is, the conversion factor is 5,280 feet per mile. So you could divide that and you get approximately 16.7 miles. So that seems possible, that an airplane could see two cities that were 16 miles apart. Okay, number four, five. Okay, it says three on your worksheet, but let's go with five. So a boat leaves harbor, sails 80 nautical miles south, and 46 nautical miles west. So it leaves harbor, it sails 80 nautical miles straight south and 46 nautical miles to the west. Probably made that a little bit too long. Let's erase a little bit of it. Okay, so maybe to there. If the boat is to return back to the harbor it left, what bearings should it use to accomplish the trip in the shortest amount of time? So obviously the straight line distance back is what we're looking for. And we're not interested in the distance. We're interested in the bearing. So... If you turn this into a right triangle, you could turn this into a right triangle too. I don't care. It doesn't matter which one you use. You need this. You need this angle right there because that's the bearing from north towards the east. So you could say north theta to the east. So finding theta should not be too hard for you. If you look at the triangle, 
You've got 80 and 46, two sides, but not the hypotenuse, so I'd go with tangent. So you could say tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, and then you could untangent it, and theta turns out to be 30 degrees. So our direction would be north, 30 degrees east. All right, there you go. That's the word problems on the back of 7.5. You do not need to do the three at the bottom. Those are from last chapter, and we're going to hold off on those. All right, talk to you later.